Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing all of you how we can use the Tiled Map Editor, some pixel art tile sets, and use those in order to create a cool D&D map that we can use on online D&D game apps such as App.Roll20. So we can basically just upload our maps that we create, align them to a grid, and then that can be the base of what we use for our D&D games. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using this pixel art top-down basic set by Kynos on itch.io. As you can see here, it is 32 by 32 tiles. So that is the pixel size for the tiles. We'll need to know that when we're creating the map. And make sure that you get the tiled map editor as well. You can get that on itch.io or you can go to mapeditor.org. I'll put links in the description. So once you have both of those things, you can open up the tiled map editor. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new map. So I'm gonna go to the file menu, new, new map. Make sure that the tile size is 32 by 32, since that's the size of our tiles. And then you can change the width and height in terms of number of tiles to anything you want. So if you want a wide map, then you could do something like 32 tiles, or you could do 24 by 16, whatever you want. And in this case, since we're doing a top-down kind of Zelda style map, we want it to be orthogonal, so don't have it set to isometric or hexagonal. And then let's go ahead and hit OK. So we'll have the little map here for us to place tiles, but we need to bring the tiles in as a tile set. So go to File, New, New Tile Set. I'm going to hit Browse, and I'm going to locate the folder where I've extracted the textures. So if you're using the same pack, it should come out as Pixel Art Top Down Dash Basic. And inside of there, there are nine texture files, and we can use each of these to create a tile set. So I'm going to double click on Props, make sure Width and Height is set to 32. And then let's hit save as, and then I'll put it right in the root directory from that downloaded pack as a .tsx tile set file. So I'll just leave the name consistent with the name of the file, which is TX props. So I will just save that there in that pixel art top down directory. Let's save it. Okay, so there we have our tile set. Let's go ahead and create the rest. So I'm going to go to file new, new tile set, browse. Okay, get the one for the wall just going to move it up one directory and you can manually change the path there if you want and then save to save as in that root directory. Okay, so that's our second one and just got to keep going until we have them all done. Okay, so now that we have all these tile sets created, let's switch back over to the map that we were going to use. I'm going to right click up here and close the other tabs. So we're just dealing with this map here. Let's uh, save the map. So I'll do a command S and I'll save it into the same folder. So let's call this DD map one and save that. So for any of the tile sets you do want to be actively using, you can just kind of pull them back in to tiled up here. So click on the first one over here, hold command down on Mac and then select all of these other ones. Okay, so we got all nine selected and I can just drag these up here to the top. So now they're all open and they'll show up here for me to actually be able to use in editing this map. So we can go ahead and start filling in the tiles. As you can see on the TX tile set grass, there's a lot of variations for the grass tile. So one way that you can have it randomly choose which one is going to display is to select all the tiles, check this little random mode here, and then start drawing with the grass. So as you can see, uh, we're getting variation in the grass tiles. If I want to fill on the entire screen, I could just use the paint bucket and then fill all the grass in all at once. So everything is kind of randomly selected between those 16 tiles. Likewise, you could actually select the flowers as well and uh, redo the same thing. So I'm just gonna delete the tile layer one and let's add a new tile layer and I'll just call this base layer. And then let's fill it in. If you think that's too many flowers, just hit Control Z to undo. And then we can actually go over to this TX tile set grass file. And if we click on Go up to the view menu, view and toolbars, make sure that properties is open on the left. And if you click over here on uh, tile collision editor, uh, we'll be able to select the individual tiles and then set a probability, which is the likelihood that when you select all of the tiles that they're going to be included. So if you want to cut the probability in half, you just change it to 0 0.5. And I think we might be able to do all of these tiles at once, but I'm not sure. So let's do 0 0.5 there and click on each of these tiles. Yep. Okay, so they're all having the probability cut in half. So now if we go back over to the map and we use these same tiles and left click, the amount of flowers should get cut in half. So if you want to go further, let's just select all of these on the tile set and then change it to 0 0.025. Go back to the map and left click. So you can see significantly less flowers there. 
So if you want to add some tiled path, we can use these options down here. So we could actually select all of these and uh, turn off paint bucket mode, go to stamp mode instead. And now if we left click and drag, it's going to be kind of creating a path using randomly selected tiles from this set that we have selected over here. Some of them might not really be matching. I guess these would not really make sense in the middle. So if you hit control Z to undo, we can just use these tiles instead and uh, draw our path. And then maybe we have one kind of jutting out here to the left and up a little bit. And now I'd like to put a little bit of a ramp up here. So I'm going to switch over to the TX struct part of the tile set where we have these ramps that lead upwards. Let's put it on a new layer. So I'm going to click on the new layer button, tile layer. And I'll just call this level two. And let's choose one of these staircases that we like. I'll just select all of them at once. Turn off random mode so that you can actually just put a staircase all at once. Instead of randomly selecting pieces, we're now just basically printing the entire selection. So I'm going to left click there, maybe back on TX tile set one. I want to add a little bit more of uh, these tile squares leading up to that. Maybe I even want one to go under the thing. So now back on level two, we can switch to the TX tile set wall and let's start putting kind of a border around this area. So I'll turn off random mode again. Let's just kind of quickly add a wall thing here. Won't go into too much details, but here we have the left side of the wall. So just kind of go all the way up like that. And then the right wall, one, two. So now all we need is some elevated ground up here. So on level two. So if we want this to kind of be like a fortress area, maybe we can use the stone ground tile set. I'll rename level two to be walls. And then I'll put an actual another tile layer right under it. And I'll call that, uh, let's call this the actual level two, but make sure that it's below walls so that the walls show on top of the ground. And now we can kind of fill on this top area with these tiles. So I'm just going to do it like this. As you can see, the invisible part of the wall tiles um, is completely transparent. So the level two tiles, the stone, will actually show right below it. So that's why ordering is important with these kinds of things. So we have all these tiles up there. I guess this transition doesn't look totally right. So I might try these two tiles right here. So I guess with these two right here, it looks a little better. I'm not 100% sure on uh, the exact usage of this tile set. But kind of the idea is we could just paint things as what makes sense to us. Um, so let's try going to props. We'll add another layer. So new tile layer, and I will call this props. Make sure it's on top so it shows above everything. And then we can add stuff like a chest. So I'll select these two squares. And we can put our chest right up there. Maybe down here we have a signpost. We could put a kind of summoning stone portal over there. Maybe some pillars, like so. And uh, kind of fill on the map with some random rocks to kind of add a little bit more detail. Maybe some cover that a uh, player could use. And let's add like a little bit of a well down here in the bottom left. And then just some random vases. Sure, why not? Of course, we also are going to need a tree. <laughs> so let's select this whole tree all at once and just paste that in there. So yeah, just make sure that you have random mode selected off so you can paste entire trees in one go, and that'll save you a lot of time. So you can keep going like this, and uh, you'll be able to make a pretty decent D&D &D map. As you can see, this really only takes a few minutes once you kind of get the gist of it. And uh, you could do this pretty much with any tile sets that you can find on the internet, as long as you can import them into tile, uh, like we just did in this video. So let's go ahead and export this map, and then we'll load it into Roll20. So I'm going to save it. Let's export it as an image. So in the same folder, we will make it a DD map. And I'll just make it a JPEG. There's no need for it to be a PNG because none of this is actually transparent. Uh, we can draw the tile grid as an option. I think that would actually be a good idea because D&D is going to be a grid based game anyway. So that can actually help a little bit, but up to you. Let's export it. Okay, and now uh, open up a DD and d game in Roll20 or your app of choice. And let's go to the image or art assets tab up here in the top right. I'm going to upload a file and I'll choose this D&D map that we exported as a JPEG. So just drag that in there. Okay, upload is complete. So we have it over here on the left. 
let's add this to a new level for our D&D game. So let's see, page toolbar, create page. Let's go into this new page. So for our new level, let's go ahead and change the name of it. Just call this tiled map one. And let's change the settings for it. So for the pixel size, we should make sure that the cell width is some increment of our tile set size. So I want to get this down to 64 pixels here. So I'm going to I'm going to put 64 here. Uh, that'll be double of what we designed it in. But if you scale it up by two, that should be just fine. So as for the width and height of the page, you can make that a little bit bigger than what you have in the tile map editor. So we had 24 by 16. So I'm going to do 25 by 17 for the height and width. And let's save that, close that out. And now let's bring in the D&D map file and make sure you do it on the map and background layer over here instead of objects and tokens. So let's drag the map file up to about here. Hold shift down so you can stretch the ratio and then just pull this out to the size of your map. Okay, so you just kind of got to get the grids to line up. So it might take a little bit of trial and error, but if you kind of just look at the grid lines, you should be able to get it to line up. So I think right there is actually where we need it to be. Um, once again, the important thing is going to be to make sure that on your map, when you come down here to sell with it, this is either the sell width that you designed the tile map at or double or triple that so that it's something you can stretch to and still have everything line up. So here we have our map, and then we'd be able to go ahead and finish setting up our game, adding objects and tokens. So if we just want to come in here and add some characters, we can look at the three assets. So maybe some orcs, trolls, and ogres. Let's just grab a couple of tokens and put them onto the grid. And yeah, basically you just be able to finish setting up your D&D game, adding the characters, of course, and if you need to hide some of these other edges, the part that isn't actually part of your map, you can just use the hide areas tool. Just kind of block that out. Let's zoom out a bit more so I can get that bottom left hand corner. And then we can hide that everything down here and everything right up till there. And that's basically everything we need to do for getting one of our maps set up for a online D&D game. So if you are looking to set up some cool D&D maps for yourself without too much effort, using a pixel art tile set is a pretty good way to do that. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I hope all of you found this video useful to the end, and I will see you in my future video content.